Hello, my friends, and welcome back. It's episode 63. Let us continue. Drifting cargo. Hecuta pattern plasma battery. Long range broadside plasma macro cannons, three shots with 33 per shot. Wow, that's a monster. Right, uh, let's cargo that because we're not going to use that. And I wouldn't want to use these lances either. Man, three shots of 33 damage each, that's amazing. Those can go to cargo. And there's no point in having double plasma because uh, torpedoes, because you you're, you're not allowed to. I might swap these around. The starboard side. For whatever reason, you tend to have enemies on your right more than on your left. This cold, windy planet is covered by a raging sea of mustard grey grass so tall it reaches an average human's waist. The monotony of endless steppe is occasionally broken by chains of murky green lakes. After two exploration watches, the crew intercepts a faint signal coming from one of the labour settlements in the deep chasm. Due to the unstable connection, the foreman mistakes your vessel for a winter scale ship, one that was due to arrive nine cycles ago. The foreman grimly reports over the weak channel that the adamantine ore deposits in the world are nearly depleted and that the planet will be fully mined out in less than a decade. We're done. Man, the fact that there's just a sweet weapon just lying there. <laughs> that certainly makes battles against uh, enemy ships easier. I mean, 3 times 33 instead of 4 times 14, and long range too. That's a huge improvement. The cogitator screen highlights the shapes of several buildings. This is a small settlement, the only one on the planet. After a lengthy descent to the planet, you are rewarded with a dismal sight. The entire outpost consists of long columns of uniform bunkhouses, machine hangars, and a large headquarters. Top with the massive antenna of an ancient vox caster. Custodian shares alarming news. The outpost is highly dependent on various deliveries from core winter scale worlds, but two ships have already failed to arrive on schedule. The locals do not have an astropath of their own, so the custodian cannot determine the cause of delays or request aid. The outpost will soon run out of food.
I got a needle rifle and some other cargo for some provisions. Glorious. That's pretty cool. The return journey treats you to a rare and unexpected spectacle. An eclipse begins as one of the two suns covers the other. Hmm, cool. Oh, level up. Let's have a look at this needle rifle. Seems like a solid weapon for a sniper. One that's actually good at sniping. Better damage and uh, better armor pen. Look, my character kind of sucks at shooting, so... I don't know if I want to give up what is effectively 45% extra chance to hit for just 10%. Just to have a weapon that is, to be fair, considerably better and 25% uh, more armor pen. Um. I mean, this is an even better weapon, let's be fair. Although missing the... missing the armor pen. But the damage output is better, for sure. I don't know, it's not a bad toy, but... It's not anything I want. Level up time. If it's not intelligence, it's willpower. Chance to re-roll any failed attack, dodge, parry, characteristic, or skill test with 20% chance of success for one round. Oh, it's if you do something to an ally. That could be good. Hit, critical hit chance increases by 1% until the end of combat every time the Psycho deals damage by any means. Now that sounds pretty good. Ah, this was the one that I wanted to go for. Whenever the Psyker uses Psychic Power, all enemies adjacent to the Psyker suffer four times Psy rating direct damage. This could be nasty because his uh, Inferno Staff hits like about eight times. So we're going to gain you know, a lot of critical hit chance over time.
Every time the enemy suffers damage from the Psyker, that enemy's armor is reduced by 3%. If it's already zero, their deflection is reduced instead. See, this is great as well. Whenever an enemy adjacent to an ally dies, that ally gains a stacking corpus conversion effect. If multiple allies are adjacent to an enemy, one is selected at random. The Psyker's next psychic power that targets only the target with corpus conversion will work as if the Psyker's psi rating is too high and will not degrade the veil. Will not trigger psychic phenomena or perils of the warp. That's useful for, uh, for healing moves. This critical heal chance and corpus conversion combine nicely with the crit chance thing up here, Blazing Inferno. Heavy armor proficiency requires 45 strength. That might be possible for... I'm going to say that that's 45 base strength. You know what, this could be powerful as well. This, this, and this could combine together to eventually create some extremely painful damage. Let's go, Blazing Inferno. Blazing Inferno and melting armor is going to result in more crit and less armor, which is more damage. I see a clear path of progression for him. You know, this might actually be quite good if it knocks enemies over. Aldari weapon proficiency. I knew this is what I was going to go for.
just a straight up better weapon. More armor pen, more damage. think there's anything else. <coughs> now, I think the armor killing sword is useful for its utility. So she would need 45 strength to be able to wear heavy armor. Prerequisites. Strength 45. She has power armor proficiency even though she doesn't have the strength for it. So I guess I'll have to find her some power armor. Carry on being my agility tank. Gotta keep that demolition high. She's gonna be my ship's gunner forever. I will get that at some point. I'll definitely pick up overpower at some point. I am not allowed to take willpower. Sad times. I can carry on bumping up her perception or fellowship. Wow, she's the one with the awareness, so let's uh let's work on that. I 
Whenever the navigator uses a navigator power that has not been used as combat, they gain two perception until the end of combat. I mean, we're going to just run out of navigator powers to take very soon. There's also base skill awareness and advanced skill awareness. Just keep on getting all the navigator powers until they run out, simply because of all the bonuses I get from stacking them. But I will bump up her awareness at some point to be even higher. can't wear heavy armor though. He needs 45 strength for that. Well, he is my tech use guy. It's how much do you want to do for combat and how much do you want to do for actually passing checks. Her tech use is pretty high as well. She can't even take strength unless I actually take the skill that gives her strength. I was just thinking about, you know, whether I wanted to heavily armor her as well. At the risk of this being a silly idea, I'm going to get her this. And I'm going to get her an extra couple of points of strength so that she can wear heavy armor. Isn't there... there's that heavy armor that gives fellowship.
this uh, this one, isn't it? This is heavy armor that gives fellowship, and of course it's heavy armor. There's no way to further boost her fellowship, so maybe uh, some points in strength to get that armor on would be worth it. It would require two additional points in strength, and then um, to get the heavy armor perk. But might be worth doing. Last us deal. I'd often visit, watch the prison population from a small planetoid. Okay. Harbour. The crew were treated to a truly impressive sight. Colossal storm on the gas giant's surface. Birth to tempest, a storm to end all storms. Okay, well, that was whatever. <laughs> a nice little bit of writing, I suppose. We're done. Boink. Trickle of disturbing news came from the navigation chambers over the last few days. Allegedly, there's a vast shadow following the void ship. Trust in the navigator's talent. Navigator engaged the warp monster in invisible combat by giving orders from her chamber. Hey, two extra insights. Sweet. So some of these yellow some of these yellow events are actually good for you. <laughs> they seem to generally be good. The orange ones are nasty though. Nothing. No connections. Oh boy, do we want to look at that? Does that seem like a good idea? Let's do it. When the rogue trader's ship draws near the unidentified celestial body, the machine spirits on every deck from the captain's bridge to the cargo hold become frantic. You awake after unsettled sleep to find yourself lying stiff on a cardboard mat. You're overcome with a strange sense of wrongness. Punch her in the face! You notice a sign on the bulkhead. Bay Theta 54. Awareness succeeded. Rob a guard post and contact Vigis using a stolen Vox. On hearing your voice, the Vox Master gives praise to the Emperor of Humanity. It just explains you were trapped in an anomaly that made people on ship inexplicably trade places. 
A rescue squad was dispatched at once to search for the Lord Captain. But you beat them to it and contacted Vigis yourself. You had to wait several more ship cycles for an escort squad to make it its way from the uppermost decks down to the very bottom. Informed about high ranking guests in their midst, the overseers of Theta Bay 54 tried to brighten your stay with passable food, a soft bed, and even warm water. A privilege not, ac not accorded to the locals. Not afforded to the locals, I would, would have said. Let's just hurry to the bridge. Okay, that's fine. All's well, ends well. Lord Captain's at the helm again, continuing the journey. Done. We got some experience. Nothing bad happened. Plus the steel. Not, not really much. Ancient bunker. Let's go spelunking in the ancient bunker. Oh, everyone's coughing. Melting venom. Yeah. A mere pain won't stop me. Let's not waste time pain with pleasantries. Join me in prayer. Why can I not see a status effect here? Always keep your eye on the price. Okay. Anyway, we're out of time. So that is it for now. But uh, I shouldn't have any problems with this. I'm sure there's a solution somewhere for this. So I will see you guys next time.